Oh, hallelujah. So God bless you richly. Praise the name of the Lord. As we want to <coughs> transition over to the word of the Lord, let's just sing the song, Touching Jesus. Touching Jesus is all that really matters. So we want to reach out and touch him and let him come and have his wonderful way. He is right there next to you, amen. That Holy Spirit, that anointing of God is wherever you are this morning. He's there to touch you. If you would only believe, if you only believe all things are possible. Are you sick this morning? God can heal you. Do you need a touch in your heart this morning? He will give it to you. Are you being pressured in the world? He is here to give it to you this morning. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, touching Jesus is all that really matters. Then your life will never be the same. There's only one way to touch him. Just believe when you call on his name and touch in Jesus is all that really matters and your life will never be the same. There's only one way to touch him. Just believe when you call on his name. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Just touching Jesus is all that really matters. And that's what we are here um, on the Bride Age Christian Fellowship down here in Orlando, Florida. That's what we are, we are here for, to help you get to Jesus, to show you the light, to show you the way. Just like um, Philip, you know, took, and Nata, uh, Philip and, and um, I think it was Andrew, where they took the Greeks, they said, we would see Jesus, but they just couldn't get to Jesus. So Philip had to go and take them to Jesus, introduce them to Jesus, and touching Jesus is all that really matters. So this morning, let us focus on touching him to receive of him this morning. So um, my name is Brother Virgil Sipasad. If you're coming on for the first time, I'm the pastor here at the Bride Age Christian Fellowship. We are broadcasting through our website at www.brideagechristianfellowship.org. And <clears throat> we also have on a uh, post our, our messages on the YouTube, Bride Age Christian Fellowship, the ch YouTube channel. So you're free to go and subscribe, free to go and listen to. We have um, almost 200 messages there that you can listen um, before, you know, the squeeze come and, uh, and we can no longer do this. So while there is D, let us work for the Lord. Let us, get, let us get into the word. Let us see how God is moving among us. Let us listen to a minister because there's going to come in time when you try to get on the internet to try to listen to a service. Amen. You know what's going to happen? They're going to, you're not going to get access to it because it's, it's going to say what? It's DIS information. Amen. That's what they're going to call it. DIS information. So um, I have to spell certain words and... and um, and, 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 and see uh, uh, different things because in, um, in my, uh, I can't transmit on YouTube. I seem to have been banned from YouTube for how long, I don't know, because I've been talking about the T-R-U-M-P of God, the trumpet of God, and I keep saying the, the word T-R-U-M-P, and I've been regularly saying it. Amen, I've been preaching it, so YouTube, uh, not YouTube, I mean um, Facebook. Facebook decided, oh, probably he's calling that name too much, but I'm not calling a man's name. I'm talking about 1 Thessalonians 4.16 for, the, for uh, the Lord shall descend from heaven with a, tr with a shout and with a voice of the trump and the, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. It's a Bible I was talking about but Facebook decided probably that they will ban me for that. But that's alright. But while we are day brother and sister feed on this word that you're getting straight from the throne of God. Feed on the word. Amen. Hallelujah. So this morning um, we like to turn to four portions of scriptures and I have two or three other scriptures that I like to reference to and like to read for you all. Um, I, and you say, well, brother Virgil, why are you reading so many scriptures? You know, I like to read the scriptures. So right away when you see the scriptures, you're going to see what we're going to talk about. Amen. 
We like to read from Romans chapter 8, verses 18 to 23. Romans cha 8, chapter 8, verses 18 to 23. Romans 8, chapter 18, uh, chapter 18, um, 8, 18 to 23. And then Genesis chapter 1, 26 to 31. And then Matthew chapter 18, verse 18. Matthew chapter 18, verse 18. And I know if you can't find it, there's a lot of scripture. I'll read it and you could follow. Matthew chapter 18, verse 18. And St. John chapter 20, verse 21 to 23. St. John chapter 20, verses 21 to 23. I know it's a lot of scriptures and if you can't get it, um, I'll read it for you um, as I have it marked. Amen. So first let us read from Romans chapter 8, verse 18, verse 18 to, um, uh, 18 to 23. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to compare with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. <clears throat> For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willing, but by reason of him who had subjected the same to hope, to ho in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our bodies. Let's turn to the book of Genesis chapter 1. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 31. Genesis chapter 1, verses, <clears throat> verses 26 to 31. And God said, let us make man in our own image, in our image, after our likeness, and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living creature that moved upon uh, the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given unto you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the, in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it shall be so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. I would like to turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 18, just one verse. Actually, we'll read two verses. Matthew, chapter 18. Verses 18 and 19. Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Amen. And final scripture of our reading would be St. John chapter 20 verse 21 to 23. St. John chapter 20 verse 21 to 23. Now this was after Jesus rose from the dead. He appeared unto disciples on the same evening, the first day of the week and so on. And he said, peace unto, unto you. And then he showed them his hands and his side and so on. And hear what he says. Then said Jesus to them again, peace be unto you. As my Father had sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. 
May God add a blessing to the reading of his word, shall we pray. Father God, we have read your word, Lord. We, uh, we sang songs of Zion, songs of worship. Lord, that uh, has meaning in our soul, has meaning in our heart and love in our heart for you. We look up to your face and we see your wonderful shining face looking down upon us. And feeling your anointing coming upon us even as we sing and worship unto you, Lord. And we love you and we will worship you, Lord, till Lord, the end of another, through all eternity as we sit with you in your kingdom. Oh, we will be worshiping, we'll be crying, we'll be singing unto you. We'll be, Lord, looking at those nail scars and say, oh, God, Lord, you died for me. You took away my sins. You brought me back. I was, I was, uh, uh, um, you know, condemned uh, to stay on the earth in a in a in a physical body, Lord. But you restore me back to that condition that I had with you before the foundation of the world. And Father God, we love you and we adore you and we praise you, Lord, that you have sent your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to shine upon us. And Father God, you know, Lord God, that every day on this earth is a is a battle. It's a fight, Lord. Sure, we get blessed, we get anointed. And there's a battle, Lord, and Satan fights me, Lord. You know that. But Lord, you have the victory in me, Lord. May your overwhelming spirit of your Holy Spirit, your abiding glory that is in me, Father, shine out this morning. Take a hold of this body, Lord, and speak your word, I pray. Bless the people most of all, that they may understand the word that you give unto them, O Lord. Speak to them this morning, I pray. And Father God, this morning, O oh Lord God, help us as we try to, to um, endeavor to listen to your word, Lord, and to read the quotes and to, and to O oh God, to cry unto you, Lord, for you to speak. Lord, uh, you know how we feel when that angel comes near, Lord. We, it's a scary feeling, Lord, but it's your anointing. May he come, Lord, and, and uh, use me, Lord, for the people. I'm your unprofitable servant. Help me today, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. So this morning for our title, for this morning for our title, God's Secret, the manifestation of sons and daughters of God in this day. So God's secret, and what is God's secret? Is the manifestation of of the sons and daughters of God in this day. And we just read that in Romans chapter 8, verses 18 to 23. That's the whole creation is growing for that. It's a, it's a secret that God hid before the world was even formed. How that the bride in this last age will be transformed. Amen. And what is our subject? Our subject has always been the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ, the subject is Jesus Christ, the secret of God's, the secret of God revealed. Jesus Christ, the secret of God revealed. And what is our inspiration this morning? Our inspiration is understanding the secret of God <coughs> displayed by His Spirit in His sons and daughters. Understanding the secret of God displayed by His Spirit in His sons and daughters. So this morning, we're so thankful for His grace this morning. He has heard our prayers. We are still alive by His grace. We, are, we have food on the table. Uh, we have jobs. We, you know, He's watching over us. But what we are seeing are the things that are taking place out in the world today. Uh, we don't know how long we'll have this opportunity. As I was saying a few minutes ago, we don't know how long we'll have this opportunity. They're going to uh, look at um, what we're saying and doing and, and, and suppress. Uh, the laws are already out there. And um, they want to take control of you. Excuse me one second. Amen. So we want to, um, uh, you know, to uh, further the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this morning, um, as I said, my name is Brother Virgil Sipasad. We are, we are operating out of Florida, the Bright Age Christian Fellowship. And we believe in God sending a prophet, the Seventh angel messenger according to Revelation chapter 3 verse 14 to 22. Revelation chapter 10 verse 7. And Malachi chapter 3 verse uh, Malachi chapter 4 verse 5 and 6. 
Behold, I send you Elijah the prophet before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Amen. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children back to the fathers. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. So that's before. I come and smite the earth with a curse. So we have recognized this man. We have looked through the church ages. And if you look in the Revelation chapter 1, chapter 2 and chapter 3, you'll see that there are seven church ages that uh, God has... Um, identify these church ages that were in Asia Minor and he has identified that these church ages had some similar characteristic of the seven church ages of the Gentile age because God uh, is not dealing really with the Jews sure he protecting them he's watching over them he's uh, making sure that things are going right and things are going well but he's not dealing with them as yet as a nation but right now he's dealing with the individuals as a, uh, as a bride, as a Gentile bride, is dealing with individuals. And Paul came out as the first messenger in Ephesians. And what Paul did, he I brought in the Gentile church ages. Amen. And he was the, 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 the church age messenger for Ephesus. And if you look through, I can't, don't want to go into two details, all the way to Laodicea, that's the seventh church age. And in that seventh church age, we have looked across the world to see, uh, you know, what, what messenger is getting us ready for what? There's no eight church age, but that messenger must get us ready for the coming of the Lord. That messenger must tell us how to prepare for great translation faith. Amen. That messenger must tell us how to be ready when Jesus comes a second time. That messenger must tell us how to get this oil in our lamp, which is rapture in faith. Amen. That little extra vessel of oil that we would have in our lamp. Amen. And that's the Holy Spirit. Amen. Showing us how to come to perfection. And we have recognized this man as Brother William Marion Branham. And Brother Branham came and was born in 1909. And he died in 1965. But his message is here. But the Bible said in Revelation chapter 10 verse 7. But in the days of the voice. Amen. And Brother, Va Brother, Brother, Brother Branham's voice is, um, is here upon the earth. Amen. Is here upon the earth. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. In books and tapes. And if you need to know more about Brother William Marion Branham, I, I, I suggest that you go visit the website www.branham.org. You'll find over 1,200 uh, uh, audio tapes and then there are other videos and testimonies and um, that will tell you more about this prophet. Amen. And this prophet brought very important messages to the church. Amen. He introduced the coming of the Lord just as John the Baptist for on the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Brother Branham message for on the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It is still forerunning. So we are looking to this man and his message. So I'll be making a lot of quotes from his messages as he preached from way back in 19, the 40s to the 50s and the 60s. Amen. In which he prophesied. Remember he's a prophet and a prophet is a reflection of God's word. A prophet is a direct reflection of God's word. Now, some people will say, well, sometimes the prophet, maybe he didn't mean that. Or sometimes, no, no, sometimes he, he like interchange words and different things. Yes. Um, um, and we all stammer and make mistakes. Me too. You know, but uh, what is the gist of what he's saying? What is the main thing that he's saying? And, you know, um, Jesus Christ, uh, you know, upbraided uh, the disciples on the road to Emmaus and, and also the sisters. I think he was talking to Mary. He said, Oh fools and slow of heart to believe all. You hear what he says? Not well, don't believe that, that or don't believe that, but all that the prophet said. Because God don't make mistakes with his prophets. Amen. Uh, he show sure everybody make you no, know, he's a human being. He would make a mistake, get angry and whatever. And he would uh, also he would say as a student of the word, this is what I believe. But when he started to preach it under the anointing and inspiration of the Lord Jesus Christ, God will not allow him to make a mistake. Amen. So that you and I, because what, what is God doing then? God is supernatural. He allow the prophet to say certain things for a reason, brother and sister. Amen. Just as Paul said, Paul said, not the Lord saying this, but I seen it. So do you want to take out that part of the Bible and throw it out and say, that's not inspired? Oh no, you wouldn't. Then you're taken away from the Bible. You're taken away from the Word. And the same thing with the prophet brother William Marion Branham. Don't tell me that, um, oh, uh, you know, he clarified that and, he, 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 and things like that. No, you believe all that the prophet said. You don't understand it. It, it doesn't match one with the other. 
Don't worry about it. That doesn't have anything to do with you. If God wants you to see it, he's going to reveal it to you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So let you believe all that the prophet have said. Amen. Hallelujah. Shake out that unbelief. Shake out said, well, you know, the prophet, show me where he said, does said a lot of nonsense. What me he show you where the, he said, does said the Lord, the bomb is going to fall on America. But he said it. He said in many, many places. He said that before the atomic bomb falls on America, the bride will be gone. Do you want him to say, does the Lord, does the Lord, the man is speaking under the anointing of an angel sent from the presence of God. He's saying it. Don't tell me, well, maybe a bomb might drop first and we're still here. And brother, the bri brother Branham said it. Brother Branham said it. No, he said atomic bomb. Remember that what he said, atomic bomb. But other things could happen, you know. Other things could happen. Maybe a missile might strike. I don't know. But he said it before the atomic bomb strike America. The bride will be gone. That's the word of the Lord. Amen. So don't say, show me where thus said the Lord is. No. Brother Branham said it. No, that doesn't mean to say a missile that is not atomic might hit us, you know. I don't know. Or an EMP or whatever it is. That's not atomic. Amen. I don't know what it is. But a hypersonic missile that is not atomic could hit America. I don't know. Maybe, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, some, some the Satan 2 bomb without, uh, you know, Russia has uh, call it the Satan 2. That's the biggest bomb the world has ever seen. He, uh, maybe they, they, they will take out the, the, uh, um, the um, nuclear warhead and put a regular warhead so it wouldn't be a nuclear war. That could happen. But here were the prophecy before the atomic bomb strikes America, the bride will be gone. And that's what we're looking for. So this morning, we want to talk about what is God's great secret. Now, what, we have to understand a few things. To uh, First, we got to understand who the God, who this uh, being is that we call God. Who is this? I'm sorry, Father God. Who is this one that we call, um, you know, the Great Eternal Father that existed before the world was even formed, that existed all alone out in eternity, seven color rainbow spirit churning out there in eternity. But uh, but but he had a mystery. He had a he had a secret, and the secret was a mystery. So let's read. Christ is the mystery of God revealed. Jeffersonville, Indiana, 28-7-1963. Sunday service, paragraph 102. Quote, Brother Branham. Now God, God's secret mystery, He had before the world began. Now back in the back part of God's mind, there was something He was trying and going to achieve. And He had a motive in doing it in order to let Himself be expressed. So you see, he had uh, what it was. He wanted to express himself. And first of all, there wasn't even a moon, a star, atomic or uh, molecule, anything. He was God. But he exactly wasn't God at that time because God is an object of worship. And there wasn't nothing to worship him. So in his great mind, he wanted these attributes to be expressed. And in him was love. In him was to be a father. In him was to be a son. In him was to be a savior. In him was to be a healer. And all of these great attributes we see already expressed, they were in God. And Brother Abraham say, that in my opinion, the first thing he made was angels. And then they worship him. And that made him God. And he started there, as in previous messages, I've tried to explain it and break it down. And when angels begin to worship him, that was before there was even a molecule in the earth. There was nothing. It was all darkness. There was no sun or moon or stars or nothing. Then he was God. And he asked you, where was you? When I lay the foundation of the earth, the world, see? When the morning stars sang together and the sons of God shouted for joy, see? Where were you? See? That was way back before the, the, the earth, amen. And God had a purpose and a hidden mystery. And that's what I want to speak on in the church this morning. That's what I'm talking about. The hidden mystery of God that he had in his mind before the world even began. And how that had unfolded itself right down to this present hour that we live in, see? then you will understand clearly. And you see now I believe that what's being done. And God, great mystery of, of how, it's a secret. He kept it a secret. Nobody knew about, knew nothing about it. Even the angels didn't understand it. See, he didn't reveal it. That's the reason on our seventh mystery. When the seventh seal was open, there was silence. Jesus, when he was on the earth, he wanted to know, they wanted to know what he would, when he would come. When he would come and he said, it's not even, not even the son himself doesn't know what's going to happen. See, God has this all to himself. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, it's a secret. That's the reason 
There was silence in heaven for a space of half an hour and seven thunders uttered their voices and John was forbidden to write it. See, the coming of the Lord. That's one thing he hasn't revealed yet of how he will come and when he will come. It's a good thing he has he, that he doesn't know. Amen. So end of quote. So what, what we're seeing is a hidden mystery. A mystery of what God in his mind before the world was even formed. So let's go back uh, millions and trillions and eons of years before the world was even created. Before, uh, you know, there was anything or anybody or angels or anything. Amen. There was this supernatural beam. Now my, my grandchildren, they, they like their science fiction and all that stuff. I, so I try to, and I, I'm no, I don't mean to be sacrilegious, but I mean to, you know, to try to bring it to, to their understanding. And, what, and to let them understand who God is. I say, so God is like an alien out there. You know, he's a supernatural alien. Think about there was no earth. There was no moon. There was no stars. There was no galaxy. There was nothing. But there was this eternal being. It's an eternal being. And he was existing there. And he was churning around in seven rainbow color of spirit churning around there in eternity. And think about this supernatural being that exists and fills the whole universe. Churning out in eternity there and revolving around red and orange and yellow and green and blue and indigo and violet and this eternal spirit. The seven spirits of God. Amen. Not seven individual spirits but seven attributes of himself churning around there in eternity and while he was churning out there and churning out there and moving around and and there he had in the back part of his mind if you want to think about his mind of this supernatural being and there out there he thought about he wanted to have little ones like himself and that is the whole mystery brother and sister that is the whole secret he wanted to have little ones like himself. He wanted to be a father. He wanted to have little rainbow color children like himself so that he could give unto them gifts. He could be their redeemer. He could be their healer. He could be their God. He could, he could sit down and have fellowship with them. Oh, glory to God. And then what happened? All that churned up. He had so much love in himself. He had so much love. Then what happened? Then this love churned up till it become like an explosion. It happened out of him. And out of him, he birthed for the son. He birthed for the son of God, Jesus Christ. Now, he was not known as Jesus Christ in those days but he was known as the Logos because the world was even formed yet there was no 16 elements on an earth so this Logos that came out of God was the very essence of his being in other words something he gave birth to something out of him amen something of a little lesser uh, uh, form than him although this logos was seven color rainbow spirit churning around as one color amen as a pillar of fire like you see across there about brother branham's head here yeah. uh, 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 a yellowish uh, yellowish uh, greenish white light that was circling around there yeah, in all eternity and this and this logos had like a body of fire uh, and it looked like a man amen and it was there churning out in eternity with his father amen no it's not two separate being remember this is a supernatural being that could be here could be there could be in africa could be in india could be in trinidad could be in, in canada it could be anywhere he's the same supernatural being he's beyond light sound time and matter Remember, he could be, you no know, people say, well, how, you know, how he could be Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He's a supernatural God. You are thinking in, in the elements of a light, sound, time, and matter. You're thinking about me seeing, smelling, tasting, hearing, and touching. Amen. That's what you're thinking on. You're thinking in the realm of your own, uh, you know, physical components of your body that's what you're thinking about so you're trying to to limit this supernatural being in the limits of your senses in the limits of your understanding but you cannot think in his limits because he's what he is supernatural God. You know, he's all over. He's in everything. He's moving out of there. But what he has done, he sent this logos. He sent the spirit of the living God. He sent his essence. Say hallelujah. He sent the ghost of the man Christ Jesus. Oh, glory to God to move among the people. And there he's churning out in eternity. And he gave birth. Amen. That was the beginning. Hallelujah. 
the beginning in the beginning hallelujah he gave birth amen to this uh this being called jesus christ amen jesus christ is the mystery of god revealed and in jesus christ amen and let's call him jesus christ because lower down the road when he come on the earth he was called jesus that's the name but he was then in a, a logos form and what happened? There he is playing like at the Father's door through all eternity. There he is also there standing. Now God, hallelujah, could have a communication. God could have a fellowship with himself. Amen. Now he has a little one like himself. But inside of this little one, what he did, he, he, he placed in that little one all the little ones for that would come down the road. So it would be a back part of his mind when he when he when his logos came out of god he planted that logos amen every little one that's you and i and what was the logos it's white light but then when it reflects through a pyramid amen to a prism amen it brings out red and yellow and orange and green and blue and indigo and violet it comes out there. It comes out to the original state that God was in. Oh, hallelujah. Revolving out there eternity in seven spirits, seven attributes of God. So this morning that logos, it was encapsulated. The whole seven color rainbow of the eternal father flowed into this logos. Hallelujah. And it was white light. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And what was that logos that came out of God? It was the love of God. It was the, the, like the, 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 the explosion. It was the, 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 the top. Oh, that it, it, God couldn't, couldn't keep it back no more in his heart. He couldn't keep it back no more. He said, I have to do this. I, I, I'm thinking about this all. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm there, I'm churning out. And, and God has emotions, you know. The Bible said that. He has emotions. He got angry. He showed love. He showed compassion. He showed blessings. He got angry too. He got, uh, you know, when they're disobedient and he's doing his best for them, you know, so he has emotions. So there was a supernatural being out there calling out to him and, 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 and it's, think about it. It's just, it's good. It's, I don't know how to explain it, brother and sister, but out of him came forth the logos. And in this logos was all things. Hallelujah. And then out of the slogos, he created all the angels. Amen. And then he created the world. Let's, so let's read um, about, about this supernatural father. Hebrews chapter 6, Jeffersonville, Indiana, 15th of September, 1957, morning service. Amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. So paragraph 628. The great forerunner has gone before us, making a way. He became, he become from spirit. The great fountains of the rainbow of God, who had no beginning and no end, he was forever God. And this ray of light came forth. It was a ray of love. That's the main one, red. The next colors follow, which was blue, and blue the trueness. And next after that was other colors, through the seven perfect colors, which is the seven spirits of God that went from that great fountain or that great diamond that Jesus spoke of. And the great diamond was chipped to reflect these colors. God was made flesh and dwell amongst us that he might reflect his goodness and his mercy among us by gifts and signs and wonders. And the whole big rainbow had become in a theophany of made in the image like man, yet he was a man. He did not have flesh, yet he was a theophany. And Moses said, I like to see you. God hid him in the rock. And when he passed by, he turned his back. Moses said, it looked like the back of a man. Then what come to pass? One day down when Abraham was setting in his tent, he got, we will get to it tonight. When Abraham was setting in his tent, God came up to him in a body of flesh. Now you say, oh, Abraham he was? We'll find out here meeting Abraham. Before that, in the order of Melchizedek, a body of flesh which was God. Sure it was. He was God in flesh. Then you say, then Abraham, why should, why would he come back and he be born? Why would he have to come back and be born? And he wasn't born then. He was just created. A body that he dwelt in. Melchizedek was the king of Salem, which was the king of Jerusalem, which is the king of peace, which had neither father nor mother, beginning of days or ending of life. Now Jesus had both father and mother, and the beginning of days and ending of life, but he was made after the order of Melchizedek, which had no beginning of days or night. 
So Melchizedek was God himself. Melchizedek was Jehovah God, the same one that met Abraham. Years later in front of his tent, he had his back turned to him. He said, why did Sarah laugh? That's right. He was the one who stood there looking over towards Sodom. Abraham recognized him because inside of his veil was an anchor holding that promise. Not because he had some sensation, but God made him the promise. And when he came into contact on that great magnet, he knew it was that in flesh. Amen. And uh, uh, end of quote, and I interject. So who was that? God took some potassium, phosphate, uh, iron, and all the different 16 elements of a man. And then he got cosmic light and so on. And he created a body and he stepped into it. But he could still be the, in run the universe, all over the, the universe. He was still God out in eternity. But he stepped down his time. It's like uh, you have a box. Think about this like a box. That we, we who are we here are living, it's a box. Amen. We, it's, uh, um, the time is, uh, is in this box throughout eternity. But he, God is standing outside of this box. But we are inside of the box, walking around. We are limited in the four corners of the box. We are limited to, to our different, uh, you know, um, um, sight and sound and light and all this stuff. But he's not limited to that. But then what he could do, he could create a, a body, step into it and then step into the box with us. Amen. That's what he did. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, so Melchizedek, that was the body that he created. Paragraph 329, and there we find out he had seven varieties of spirit. Is that right? The Bible said in Revelation that the seven spirits before the throne of God. Is that right? The seven manifold, seven spirit. We find that there were seven colors. There were seven church ages. Oh, just run, seven is complete. And God was complete and seven spirits. And these spirits were perfect. The first was the color of red, perfect love, redemption. And now if we had time, we'll get through these colors and show each one of these colors represents God uh, purity. These colors, these seven natural colors, these colors represent the purity of God. And the, these colors represents the motive of God, the attribute of God. These seven colors, they represent seven church ages, seven stars, seven messengers, all through the scripture, seven ministers, seven messengers, seven messages, all in the seven, seven days, six days, and the seventh is the Sabbath. Perfect, complete, amen. And I also say seven thunders, seven voices, or the seven church age messenger. And Brother Abraham went on to talk about the color red and redemption and so on. Amen, hallelujah. Oh, praise God. But what came out of God, end of quote, what came out of God is that redemption. Amen was love, perfect love. Question and answers on Hebrews, Jeffersonville, Indiana. Wednesday, uh, the 2nd of October, 1957. Um, let's just read paragraph 383. And God was this great spirit. We've pictured him, the seven colors of the rainbow that covers the bow would actually cover the earth, but it didn't strike the earth. It's just a water in a circle of the curvature of the earth. What makes it? But now as God is eternal and he was the perfect, perfect love, perfect peace, perfect joy, perfect satisfaction. And all those seven spirits, as we got in Revelation, they came out, was made, was made up God, was perfection. Everything else outside of that has, has been something that has been perverted from that. And the only way that we could come back to perfection is to come back with that perfection, which is God. I interject those seven spirits or the seven church ages, the seven voices, the seven thunders. Amen. Christ is the mystery of God revealed. Paragraph 141, the first thing was that God wanted to reveal himself to the people. Amen. But he couldn't do it as a great Jehovah God who covered all space and time and eternity. He could not. He's too great and ever to be revealed to the people because it would be too mysterious. How could that great being uh, that, uh, that never did begin, that never went beyond the circle of a hundred, that, uh, that after you went beyond the circle of a hundred or billions or trillions of years of light space, and out into infinity, into eternity, that a great creature that was all that and still is. See, I was right when I interject, when I talk about he's an alien. Here, Brother Abraham called him a creature. Amen. That is out there. Amen. Before the world was informed, before there was angels, before the logos came out of him, supernatural beam. Continue the quote. But what he wanted to do, he wanted fatherhood. You see the mystery? You see God's secret? 
Amen. And I'm going to reveal the, the, the culmination of his secret in this last days under that seventh seal. Amen. But what he wanted to do, he loved fatherhood, for he was a father. And the only way he could express it was to become a son of man. That's the reason Jesus keeps saying, son of man. But they didn't know what he was talking about. Many of them, he wanted to express himself. That was his, one of his great threefold purposes was to express himself, identify himself with human beings, to reveal himself in Christ. And uh, secondly, to have the preeminence in his body, that in his bride that he may live in people. You see, God above us, God with us in Jesus Christ, and God in us by the Holy Spirit and by seven live voices living out of you. So God was the eternal God. He wanted, to, he wanted to talk to the people. He wanted to have communication. He wanted to have fellowship. Remember he, remember he used to come down. We having a, um, how is the, uh, could you check the, 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 the is it, um, is it going well? What is happening? Oh my, what is happening with our transmission today? Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. We have an interference today, a lot of interference. Bear with us, brother and sister. There's nothing I could do about it, but you're hearing me? Yeah, the voice is good, but the video doesn't seem to be going very well. Um, let's see, status. Um, um, it's streaming live. Uh, bit rate is fine. Total data output is fine. Um, um, well, brother and sister, I don't know what's causing it to be that way, but um, I, I pray that God, the voice, uh, you hear in the voice, but I pray that God uh, work it out, work it out. Father God, may you uh, help the video, may, may the people see, and may they hear, Lord, it's not me, but it's you. Grant it, Lord. All right, praise God. So that's what God wanted. Now remember, God wanted to talk to the, he wanted to talk to the, um, no, it's frozen. No, he wanted to talk to um, the people. And when he wanted to talk to the people, what happened? What happened when he wanted to talk to the people? So he told Moses, he said, he said, guys, uh, Moses, bring, all, bring everyone to the foot of Mount Sinai. I want to talk to them. Bring everyone. Let me just see if I could... I could fix it here, brother, sister. Give me a give me a minute. See if I could fix it. Um, configure video. Um, can you bear with me one second? Let's see if we could fix it. Glory to God, Amen. All right. Let's see if we could fix it once more. All right, and uh, let's try it one more time. Okay, praise God. Let's try it. Oh, there we go. Thank you, Lord. So uh, God told Moses, bring all the children of Israel, bring all the cattle and everybody, bring them around, surround uh, uh, Mount, uh, Mount Sinai. I'm coming down to talk to them. Oh, God was so happy. God said, now I'm going to talk to these two million plus people. He was so happy. He said, let me go down. Moses, I'm coming down, Moses. Oh, Moses, I'm feeling so good. I wanna, but, I want, but, but, but I want people to be careful because my holiness, my righteousness is, uh, is so strong for the people. Even the A angels, uh, you know, sometimes hide to hide their face. He said, but I'm coming down. I want to talk to them, Moses. And, and then he said, but Moses, make sure they sanctify themselves. Moses, make sure they, they keep away from their wives and, and they, they, they sanctify, uh, sanctify themselves before I'm coming down to talk to them. And what happened? God came down on the mountain. Oh, glory to God. The earth started to shake. Oh, glory. Amen. The, the sound of a trumpet, uh, you know, is exceedingly loud, increasing the sound. Uh, louder and louder and louder and louder. And lightning and thunderings and, 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 and the mountain is shaking. <clears throat> Amen. And God come down and he started to speak. I probably thought that he would speak. He said, thou shall have no other gods before me. Amen. Thou shall not kill. And the earth was shaken and the people got scared. They call on Moses. And Mo even Moses himself. You know what Moses said? He said, you know what? God, he, uh, Moses he wrote in the, in the Bible. He said, I even me exceedingly shake and tremble. He was shaking. He was trembling. Amen. And then the people come and bow down before Moses. Moses, please, please, please. We all going to die if the supernatural creatures, brother Ramsey, the supernatural being comes down. Oh, we're all going to die. 
I, I, you know, please, Moses, listen. We will stay down here in the plane. You go up and speak with him. And that's how God started to use prophets and, and minister to speak. Because if he decides to come down to speak to you, brother, or the whole world will vanish away. Because it's sinful. I don't even know what will, what will happen. But that's what Brother Branham says. But you know what? But what is that mystery? What he, was, what he wanted to do. That's what he wanted to do. He wanted to have fellowship. He wanted to have little ones like himself. He was the father. Uh, emotion was so predominated in him. Love for a father, for children. You know, was so powerful in him. That out came the logos. Which was the love of God. Predestinated. Amen. Before this, for you to see this mystery. Let's, let's talk about uh, mystery of God revealed. Paragraph 184. Predestinated. That's the mystery. He, before Christ or anything else, was over the earth. Ever on the earth. You see? His great, great mystery that he chose the bride. Ah. Oh, glory to God. You see here? You see uh, what Brother Branham is saying here? What is that secret? The bride. The manifestation of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, in the bride. Oh, glory to God, under the seventh seal. That's why the whole world was quiet. You know, Satan doesn't understand how this bride is being formed, you know. Because Satan could, could, you know, he could pervert a lot of things. But the true seven-color rainbow spirits, he cannot pervert that. Amen. He could, he could bring a substitute instead of love. He could bring lust. Amen. Instead of faith, he could bring unbelief. Instead of virtue, he could build weakness, you know. Uh, 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 and knowledge, he could bring uh, disinformation. <laughs> I, I think about that word. Amen. So Satan could impersonate it. But he does not understand how love is being formed in the bride. He does understand because he can't, he can't experience it. He was a created being. The bride of the Lord Jesus Christ came out of the Logos. Is a part of God. Is a part of that seven color rainbow attribute with spirits. That is existing way before the world was even formed. That's why Satan can understand it. Amen. And what it is now. What is his secret? His secret is these. Those who are alive and remain. Don't you understand brother? There's never been in this. Since the world was ever formed. Now I give all glory and and praise to the Lord Jesus Christ, because he's the one that blazed the trail. He never died, but his flesh died. The flesh died. So, but, so, so he died. He tasted of death. And uh, Brother Branham died. He's in the grave waiting. Paul died. Irenaeus died. All these others are waiting. What are they waiting for? The manifestation. God's secret. They're waiting for God's secret to be revealed and manifested, which is the manifestation of the sons of God. Amen. And what is that manifestation? You who are alive and remain, all oh, these seven color spirits, seven color rainbow, seven color spirits of God will be, will be oscillating in you, will be churning out in you, just like he our Father was churning out in great eternity. No, oh, hallelujah. No, he's seen the little ones in you. Amen. Now you were supposed to come in a body form like the Logos, like a theophany, and, um, and you could change body, glorify. To, to, because if you were in your original form, when he formed you, you were formed seven color rainbow spirits because you came out from him. But he couldn't have communication he couldn't have fellowship he couldn't have worship he couldn't have so uh, 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 the seven color rainbow spirit standing there saying um oh father god i love you oh father god i praise you father god he didn't have that fellowship because you was like him seven color rainbow spirit existing out in eternity now we say that brother brother virgil that is profound that is I can't understand that. Okay, let me ask you, let me show you exactly. Do you believe you are son or daughter of God? If you believe you are son or daughter of God, full of the Holy Spirit, walking in, in the light of the Lord, right? You believe that. Amen? Then you are what? You are um, a son or daughter of God, full of the Holy Spirit. I just lost the, the train of uh, thought here. Oh, yes. So, so let's, let's think about it. 
Like, let me use my example. My name is Brother Virgil. My father' name was Frank, and my father, you know, and I came from the my body. This body came from the gene of my father. This physical being that you see here, my face and my features, and came from the physical gene of my father, my earthly father. But the spirit that is dwelling in this physical body, this earthen vessel, is a gene that comes from God. Is a color, seven color rainbow spirit seed that is in my soul, that is sitting there in my heart, a little compartment there. Amen. That is, that is, that is causing me to speak and to think and to move and, and to move in this body that I'm, I'm living in. So when I look at my father's picture, I have his features. Huh? Don't I have his features? I walk like him. I talk like him. I have certain mannerism like him. Why is that so, Brother Virgil? Because I'm a seed, this body, this physical body is a seed, is a gene, is a replica almost, is an offspring of my father, Frank. Amen? So what about the spirit form that is in you? What about it? If you are gene of God, if you are spirit, if you are spirit of his spirit, bone of his bone, oh hallelujah, if you are, if you are seven, if you if he is seven color rainbow spirit, who you are, brother and sister? Oh, praise God, hallelujah, who you are? You are seven color rainbow spirit, but you have to bypass your theophany <clears throat> to come down in this earth to take up this body of a of an animal because Eve bypassed the spoken word theophany form that they were supposed to walk the earth in this flesh form. Amen. Hallelujah. Bypass it. Amen. Because of sinful nature. Because she saw the lust. And we could preach on that. I, brother, uh, brother, sister, there's a lot of details in there. But what am I saying? Hallelujah. For we bypass that original body that God wanted to put us in so that we will have communication with him. We'll have, um, you could call it theophany or whatever, but I'm calling it a body. Uh, you, and people get mixed up with the word theophany. So let's call it a body. So you had a body there. You had a, you, you had a, 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 I call it like a garment there. You had it there where he wanted to place you in there, place you upon the earth so you could call up to him. You could talk to him. He could come down in the garden in the evening. Oh Adam, Adam, where are you? Virgil, where are you? John, where are you? Oh, I want to come and have fellowship with you. I want to come, come sit on the, uh, under this tree here with me. Let me have fellowship with me, you. Let me talk with you. He was wanted, that's what he wanted to happen. Just like he did with Adam and Eve. Hallelujah. Oh, Ra uh, uh, Ralph, or oh, 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 Sankey, or oh, oh, whoever your, your name might be. Amen. Or oh, Brother Timothy, or oh, Timothy or John or Andrew whoever you are and he wanted to call you by your name and you sit under that wonderful tree or whatever and just look and pop to his face and he could fellowship with you he could talk to you says uh, Andrew son Timothy son what, oh, did you do well today did you talk to che the cheetah or did you talk to the lion or um, oh yes uh, uh, oh yes father God I know um, um, he listened to me and uh, I, I move a tree from here and I put it there. That's what he wanted. But we bypass or theophany, bypass that body. Amen. Where we could have spoken to him, where we could have ta talked to him. We bypass the body, but we had to come that now we have to be redeemed back to that original state that we're in. You were always... Glory to God, you who are alive and remain in this last day to meet the coming of the Lord. You were always seven color rainbow spirit, brother and sister. You were always that seed in you is of God. That's your father nature. You were always that way. Amen. You didn't, you didn't become that way. You were always, but what had to happen? He had to shine his seven color light upon you. He has to shine it in the church age. He has to pass it through the logos, the prism of his word. Amen. He had to pass it through there so it could shine upon you. And why, why do you think you are living in his last days? Amen. Because you are part of that seven color rainbow spirit. And now he shined brotherly love, brotherly kindness upon you. He has shined faith. He has shined virtue. He has shined knowledge. What it is, is virtue, is, is faith, is anointing that faith seed in you.
And virtue is anointing that virtue seed in you. And the knowledge is anointing that knowledge seed in you. So seven color rainbow spirit of my father is coming upon that seven color rainbow spirit that is a dormant seed inside of me. And it's coming upon me. And I'm going to display his faith. I'm going to display his virtue. I'm going to display his knowledge. And then in the delay of DCI age, brotherly love, brotherly kindness, he's going to display that age upon you. He's going to display his attribute seed son word upon you how does it come it comes by his thundering voices it come by his voice that is speaking to you now when you hear that voice brotherly love brotherly kindness it comes up on you upon you why because the voice of god speaks it and what happened it raises up on you and then what happens oh now he's going to overshadow you He's going to overshadow you with this logos that came out of him before the foundation of the world. He's going to overshadow you, overshadow you with uh, agapo love. He's going to overshadow you. But you always will seven color rainbow spirit seed word. You who are alive and remain. Oh, Paul didn't see this. Oh, Martin didn't see this. Way up to Brother Branham. Brother Branham preach it in a word as a promise. Brother Branham say, I wish if I could live to see it. I wish if I could live. And I wish if I had the voice of the archangel now to bring you to this. Hallelujah. Amen. The voice of the archangel. Oh, praise God by seven live voices coming in you. So, uh, you know, what? if you, you come uh, you don't want to believe that the seven voices are the, the seven thunders are the seven voices of these seven church ages messenger. I'll put it a little more detail. Seven thunders are these seven spirits of God that anointed these messengers in seven church ages to teach you, to bring you to perfection. To you know what it's doing? It's like a it's like a gift. Amen. You all wrapped the well, it's like a package. You're all wrapped up with all kind of different layers, but deep down inside of you, glory to God, deep down inside of you is that seven color rainbow seed. You are just like your papa. You talk like your papa. You speak like your papa. Now, you, you know, because of your sinful nature, amen, your body was in subjection to these things. But this is God's secret. What is his secret? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Jesus Christ, amen, is the uh, mystery of God revealed. Oh, that whole mystery is him. Because you were him. You were in him before the foundation of the world. You were in him in the logos. When all this thing came out, God saw, he saw, he saw, he saw Paul and Arenas. He saw him the prophet. But he saw beyond that. He saw what? His secret being made manifest. Sons and daughters manifested on the earth to draw the rest out of the grave. Oh, this is such a lovely thing I like to talk about. I am only on page six and I haven't read the quotes yet. But this is you, my brother and sister. You got to believe this. You got to believe that you are that seven thunder rainbows trout. You got to believe that you're seven color rainbow encapsulated in you. Hallelujah. No, I may not fully understand that. But I'm just like my father, am I not? Amen. And my physical father, am I not? Do I talk like him? Do I have mannerism like him? And so on. Oh, yes. But so then what about my spiritual being? Are we a sons and daughters? You always was a son and a daughter. You didn't come to go, you didn't become a son and a daughter when you come to Calvary. No, sir. You were always a son and a daughter. You came to Calvary for the blood to wash away your sins, for the blood to physically come upon that 16 elements that you're standing on. You are from the earth, brother and sister. So what has already happened to you is that that blood has already come upon you physically. So what has to happen now? Oh, the seven color churning rainbow spirit of eternal God in the form of the Holy Spirit, in the form of the ghost of the man Christ Jesus, in the form of the logos must come upon that five ministering gift that will tell you how to come to perfection. And while they speak that word, that, that Holy Spirit, seven thunder and voices will come forth to you. Amen. They will take the prophet message. They say, here it is written. Here it is written. Here it is written. It is written in the prophet message. It is written in the Bible and it will come to you and spark off to you. Amen. Amen. The power of the Holy Spirit. I want to read Ephesians chapter 1. You don't need to get it. I'll read it for you. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 3 to 10. <clears throat> Praise the name of the Lord. Ephesians chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father. Oh, who are we talking about? 
We talk about seven color rainbow God spirit. This creature that Abraham talk about that is existing out there. Listen what he's doing. Here's the whole plan. Here's the whole secret in the book of Ephesians that we're going to talk about. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. You see what he's saying? He's the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the mystery of God. And when you talk about Jesus Christ, you're talking about his bride that is in him already. When he went to the cross and when he died, his bride was with him. When she died, when he died, she died. Amen. And then they cut aside and the bride was taken off. But then he went down into Hades. Oh, hallelujah. And he preached to the souls that were in prison. And then he went and grabbed the keys of death, hell and the grave. And then he went to paradise. Oh, we could go on and on. Uh, but I don't, don't want to divulge, uh, um, divert it to another, an, another topic for another day. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ, according as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Why and how? That we should be holy. Now who is holy? There's only one that is holy and that's God. And if you are a son of God, in that seed, wood, seven thunder, color, rainbow spirit that is in you, you are holy. But what must come to pass? It's like a package. He has to, because you're in a 16 elements, but he wants to get down into that, to anoint that, that seed, wood that is in you. Amen. So he removed the first package. Amen. And the next, the next seventh, the one of the other spirit, and the first package he removed that was that was packaged to uh, uh, blocking faith. Amen. But then he removed the next package that was blocking virtue. Amen. That was going to reveal virtue and knowledge all the way down to brother love, brother kindness. That was the last wrapping. Oh, glory to God, brother love, brother kindness was the last wrapping that he had to anoint by seven thundering voices. Oh, voices! What is a is a voices of is a voice of God that shakes earth? Amen. It shakes your sixteen elements. Amen. And he unwrap it. He unwrap and he got the faith. He unwrap and he got the virtue. And then when he got down to brotherly love, brotherly kindness. Oh dear, when he unwrap it, what it is now happen? It's going to Revelation chapter three, verse 19, 20, 21. What is it? Christ Himself, the the love of God, the the the, the logos that came out of God. Let's continue the reading. Oh, hallelujah. And according to it, he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us. What is predestinated? He foreknew. He, in the back of his mind, he already for, he already saw you. He already called you. He already formed you. In his mind, this great creature that is out there, in his mind, he already see you seven color rainbow spirits dancing in a, in a theophany. Oh, a theophany like the logos. A theophany where you could have fellowship. A theophany and, and whatever. And then you could change whatever body you want. You are like a God. Because why? You are part of this great supernatural God oh glory I, I, I can't seem to get out of this having predestinated unto us unto the adoption of children by Christ Jesus that Jesus Christ himself according to the good pleasure of his will way back before the world was formed this seven color rainbow spirit was saying oh I want to have pleasure with my children oh glory to God hallelujah to the praise of the glory of his grace wherein he had made us accepted in the beloved in whom we have redemption through his blood. So the 16 elements had to be redeemed. So he will bring us back onto the seven color rainbow spirit perfection. That's going to happen only in this age. It did not happen out there in, the, in all the ages. It must happen in this age. Seven color rainbow spirits will be in perfection for charity to come down. Oh glory to God. To the praise of the glory of his grace. Wherein he had accepted us in the beloved. In whom we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he had abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one things, in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even unto himself. Oh, do you want, you seen what he's saying? 
that in the dispensation of the fullness of time. And that's where we are right now, brother and sister. We're in the fullness of the dispensation of the time where you're going to be changed. You're going to be transformed. Oh, you seven color rainbow spirits that are sitting in 16 elements. Oh, let that light of the seven thunder voices shine upon you and let it bring forth faith and virtue and knowledge and temperance and patience and godliness and brotherly love, brother kindness. And then will come that great love of God. Abiding glory going to come upon you. Let's read Galatians chapter 4 oh glory to God amen Galatians chapter 4 verse 1 to 7 oh let's see your position oh you, you are son of God you are heir of God you are seven color rainbow spirit that came out of him hear what uh, uh, um, um, Paul is saying and now I say that the heir as long as he's a child differed nothing from a servant though he be lord of all but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father even so we when we were children were in bondage under the elements of the world but when the fullness of the time has come didn't Paul just say the dispensation of the fullness of time that is what is happening no the fullness of the dispensation of time God sent forth a son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that they might receive their adoptions as sons and now because we are sons God had set forth the spirit of his son into our hearts crying Abba Father that means we love you Father oh whoever you see you see what Paul is saying he's bringing you back he is saying that the Lord Jesus Christ, that blood that flow on Calvary, that, that, that redemption, that training that you have getting in these seven color rainbow spirits, those are climbing the seven steps of perfection, climbing the pyramid. What is he saying? Is bringing you back to what? To when you recognize the seven color rainbow spirits of this great eternal father and you, you look at yourself and you see seven color rainbow flowing out of you. What do you say? Abba Father. Oh, glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Where, wherefore, we are no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God, of God through Christ, through the logos, through the seven color rainbow spirit. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Predestinated, elected. Amen. Let's just read. Christ is the mystery of God. Predestinated. Uh, paragraph 184 predestinated that's the mystery he before christ or anything else was over the earth you you see his great mystery that he choose he choose the he choose the bride oh my we could branch off into so many things i'm seeing so many things open before me choose the bride amen brother branham is still waiting all the sages of the old are still waiting what are they waiting for? They're waiting for you, my brother and my sister, you seven color rainbow spirit seed word that God has been shining light upon all these years and anointing it. He's ripping apart every, every layer to get down to when you, you receive brother love, brother kindness. When he exposes brother love, brother kindness in you, it has always been you, brother, because you are seed. Amen. It didn't come to you and you, but you were birthed in it. Hallelujah. But because of this sinful flesh, it is all wrapped up in a sinful flesh. But you are seven color rainbow seed. Now, when he comes down there and he, he, and he shows all seven colors, all seven spirits of God, he's looking back. He said, mm, I see my spirit of faith in there. I see my spirit of virtue in there. I see all the way back to brother love, brother kindness. Let him call, let's call him aside. Let's visit him with an angel. Let's give him something that will shake the world. Give him something. And if he speak the truth, then they got to listen to him. What is it, brother? You do visit him with an angel. Pour your Holy Spirit upon it. Then I'll come down with abiding glory. And I'll anoint that word seed that is inside him. I'm seen in faith. I've seen virtue all the way unto brother love, brother kindness. And I will anoint that Holy Ghost that is upon him. That seed word, I'm going to anoint it by charity. I'm going to anoint it with myself. That very essence that came out of me. That very old logos. I'm going to pour it upon him too. Oh, glory to God, because why? He's my son. I'm seeing seven color rainbow spirits upon him. Amen. Sure, he's in a body of 16 elements, but I'm going to send that voice of the archangel to change him and to transform him from corruption to incorruption. But we still be in 16 elements. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. 
So knowing Eve would fall from disbelieving the word, knowing that she would fall, but he would choose a bride that will not fall. Oh, glory to God. Don't you see my brother and sister? Your bride that will not fall, that would hold to the word regardless of all the rest of the world had to say about it. They would hold to that word. They are predestinated to stand there. The adoption of children by Jesus Christ, predestinated church to that glorious stand. Now see his secret. Listen closely. Brother Branham is telling you the God's secret that was hid before the world was formed. Did I read it in Ephesians for you? Paul said there was be, this is a secret before the world that even so he didn't fully understand it. Amen? Now, paragraph 185. Now you see his secret. What to? To restore fallen Eve as she was a prefigure of the church. Now notice, as God opened up the side of Adam and took out Eve by his own flesh and blood and divided his spirit from masculine and feminine, feminish, to put feminish, he put it in Eve, took the rib from under his side, and made either Eve out of it. So God did the same thing, taking out the side of Christ, the blood and water, and Christ is the word, and taking the word, and making up his church. Amen. Eve, see, back to himself again, redeemed by the blood that was come from his body. So, end of quote. So, brother and sister, we are the feminine part of the Logos. Didn't Brother Abraham say that? We are the feminine part. We are supposed to be the sweet and kind and loving part. What, what, does our, what does our wife do to her husband? She serves him. She loves him. She respects him. She uh, reverence him. Oh, he, she knows he's coming. She knows uh, he's, uh, uh, he's coming. He's about uh, uh, the space of a half an hour away uh, from his work, whoever his work that he was doing. He's uh, about a space of an hour, uh, half an hour. What she's doing? She's wrapping himself in that wonderful garment that he gave her. Oh, glory to God. She's making sure her hair is good. She's making sure her shoes is all prepped with the preparation of the gospel of peace. She's putting on the breastplate of, of righteousness. Oh, hallelujah. She's walking a certain way. She's talking to neighbors saying, uh huh. Ah, her boyfriend, her husband is coming. Look how she's carrying on. Look how she's acting. She's singing. She's worshiping. She's giving God glory. And the same way for you and I, brother. Oh, the same way. Because you are the feminine part of the Logos. Amen. God split the Logos on Calvary. You are the feminine part. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Feminine part. That's going to be his manifestation. You're going to sit with him on his throne. Not everybody in all through the churches is going to sit with him in his throne. No, 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 no. Only those who came out of the Laodicea church age. Oh, not those that have gone and died and gone on. Now you say, oh, the prophet will sit on his throne. No, no, no. Look when the, par the pyramid, how the pyramid is set up. Look who introduced the comma to the king and the queen. That was Elijah. That was the seventh angel messenger. That was Brother Branham. He's going to introduce the comma. He's going to live at the, at the seventh age. Amen. And he's going to introduce whoever comes up to visit this king and queen sitting on the throne. Hallelujah. He is going to introduce them. He's not going to sit on the throne. Amen. But, what, but who you who are alive and remain? Because look, brother, it's only those who overcome the age. Only those who overcome get that reward. Amen. No, Brother Bram will get all seven rewards. Wonderful. Amen. And other ministers and my mom and others. But you who are alive and remain. Do you know, brother and sister, it has never been in the history of the Bible going all the way back to Adam. Is anybody being like you? Amen. Anybody being with like the actual seven color rainbow spirit sitting in an earthly body? Oh, when you were born, I believe this. Uh, from the study of the prophet message and the word when you were born. Amen. He placed a seed, seven thunder, seven spirits, seven color rainbow seed inside of you. Amen. That's the real you. Oh, my, that's the one that came out of seven spirits. Amen. But you had to bypass your turn for you. You have to take up the 16 elements. But now in this day, 2022, 2023, the voice of the archangel, just as Lazarus, amen, raised up from the dead by the voice of the archangel. A man that was dead four days, his eyes fell out, his nose fell out. He was down in paradise, in, in, um, in Hades, he was down there. He was down there, chatting with his relatives. Say, well, you know, Jesus Christ is the Messiah, you know. 
Jesus Christ, uh, and I'm sorry I didn't get to, to stay more time with him, but Jesus Christ, he said he's coming down. He said he's going to come, die and come and come again. And then Jesus spoke the words, Lazarus came forth and Michael, amen, transition from the physical realm and going into the spiritual realm and went down into Hades. Michael what? He bypassed all souls and went prison. He bypassed the devil kingdom. He bypassed all those things. Amen. He didn't have the blood, but he was a mighty angel. He could have walked through anywhere. He could have gone anywhere because that was, that was Christ. Amen. And that voice went down into Hades. Went down and saw all these uh, people who died um, uh, in the days of Noah. Didn't repent. He didn't bother with them. He walked straight through. Amen. He passed Hades. The, uh, he passed the, the devil's kingdom. The devil's wondering, what is going on? Why is Michael down here? Amen. And then the devil see Michael pass his door. And Michael went down into the Hades. And then he's look. He said, uh, first he opened the door. He saw Isaiah. Mm -mm, not you, Isaiah. He saw um, Enoch. Enoch. Uh, not, uh, yeah, he saw them all. He saw um, uh, 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 um, Elijah. He saw Moses. He saw Abraham. He saw Isaac. He saw Jacob. He saw all these others. He said, no, you move aside. Um, they said, you come for me now? Am I, the one, am I going to come now? Is it, is it, uh, Job said, oh, is this a resurrection? Is this when I'm going to see him in flesh? Jo uh, Michael said, no, 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 no. And he sees uh, uh, um, um, Lazarus in the corner there, talking to his relative. Lazarus, come forth. And then a twinkling of eye came back. Lazarus came back from the spiritual realm, back into the physical realm. By what? By the voice of the archangel. And then Lazarus' body raised up. So every sickness that was upon Lazarus was healed. Amen. And that is going to happen to you because you are seven color rainbow seed word. Amen. In 16 elements. Oh my. I'm now on page 7. Oh, hallelujah. Redeem. You see the mystery that God, here with Abraham, paragraph 186. God's great mystery now being unfolded. That's been hid since the foundation of the world. That prefigured it all the way down through. Now watch. We find that he did that. And here in Ephesians and many other places. But that will give you enough down through the ages. He has been slowly unfolding this mystery. Can you see it? Or did he? What happened in the prefigure? He opened Adam's side and took out a part of his flesh, which was Adam. And to make Eve, the bride has to be the word, for he is the word. She cannot stand on creeds. She cannot stand on denomination. She cannot stand on good behavior. She has to stand alone on the word because she is part of it. She was taken from Christ. See? End of, <coughs> end of quote. I'm talking, I'm like a choking here, brother. Sorry about that. But I'm so excited, brother. I'm seeing this. Amen. So she is what? The feminine part of the Logos. Um, so here it is. <coughs> God's secret. The manifestation of the sons of God. Adoption. Um, adoption, paragraph 19. Adoption 4. Tell me, my brother. Tell me, my sister. When was the time that the sons of God was ever to be being made manifested outside of this time now? When were there ever a time in the history that this manifests the time to deliver all nature? Nature, the nature itself is groaning, waiting for the time of, manifest, of the manifestation. Why? Before the atonement was made, before the Holy Ghost was ever poured out, before all the Old Testament all down there, there couldn't have been manifestation. It had to wait until this time. End of quote. Hallelujah. And No, let me continue the quote. Now all things have been brought Coming up, shaping up to the headstone, brother. I'm talking about this, the, the pyramid or the statue of a perfect man. Shaping up to a headstone to the manifestation of the sons of God coming back and the spirit of God coming into these men so perfectly until their ministry be so close like Christ till it will join with him and his church together. Oh, hallelujah. Adoption part three, paragraph 159. Is that right? Waiting. God's trying to place his church in position to manifest himself, getting one that he can work here like that. True. There's my spirit flowing freely, freely. Amen. <clears throat> Brother Branham says here, and I get another one over there and place him. I can place him, adoption, place him, manifest him, take him out there, put a ceremony on him, visit him with an angel. Tell him something. And if he told the truth, no, if he's just making up something, it wouldn't work. No, no, no. That wouldn't work. We have got, had a lot of that. 
but I mean manifestations of the Son of God. When God manifested himself and he sends him out. And when he goes forth and what he says is truth. And what he does is the truth. What he does, he manifests Christ. How do you judge him? By the way he stays with the word. Right with the word. See, that's how you know all men. Is by the way he stays with the word. If they speak not according to the word, there's no life in them. Says the Bible. See, leave them away. Lead them away. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Coming back again to our great Papa God. Let's uh, here's a quote. Fifth, paragraph 52. Adoption 2. Now let's go back into the foundation of the world again. And get a revelation. And see if we are right or not. I hope I don't make myself sacrilegious by calling God Papa. But I want to say that you'll understand it. Papa. Papa wanted some children. So what did he do? He said, let's there be angels. And they come around him. Oh, that's fine. They worship him. Then he was God. The attribute. Remember? He was El, El Elohim. Allah Elohim, self-existent, nothing by him. The first thing uh, come around him was angels. Them angels could do no more than worship. They couldn't be lost, so they couldn't be sick. They were immortal beings, so they couldn't display his healing power. He couldn't display his salvation, uh, not yet. And after that, let's make something tangible. So he made an earth, and he made the earth, and he made all the creatures of the earth, and then he made man. Everything that come on the earth, starting off with a polywog or jellyfish, just a form of flesh floating in the water, started from that frog, from that to frog, that is the lowest type of earth, life on the earth. They claim a frog, highest form is a human being. From a frog it started a lizard, from a lizard and on and on. And every time the holy ghost began to whoosh, breathe, life came again, whoosh, greater life. And the first thing, something came up in the image of God, that was man. Nothing has ever been or never was or never will be created anymore. Anything higher than a man, because a man is the image of God. See, oh hallelujah. And when he first made his first man, now he made his angel beings. He made man, created he, male and female, all in the same unit. unit. He was both man and women, feminine and masculine, feminine and masculine. When he made Adam and put him in flesh, remember in Genesis 1, he made man and women. And in Genesis 2, there was no man yet to till the soil, flesh man. No man that could take a hole and till the soil. And yet there was a man in his image. And God is spirit. That's right. See, he made the first man. Male and female created he them. And then he made his first man. Oh, praise God. Uh, question and answers. Uh, uh, 29753. Oh, just, let's just read it. And if Paragraph 21. And if God created man in his own image and in his own likeness, what kind of man did he create? Seven color rainbow man. Spirit man. Oh, now you'll notice, after he had made all creation and created a spirit man, the close reading of this now, to the one that asks the question will find this, that God gave dominion of the cattle and the fishes and everything to the man, but in his making up there, he made man in his own image to lead the cattle, lead the beasts of the field, just like the Holy Spirit leads the believer today. See, he was, in other words, Adam, the first man in the lower creations of God. The first creation was God himself. Then out of God came the Logos, which was the Son of God. Then out of the Logos, which was the Word, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. So out of the Word, the Logos, which was the Word, out of the Logos came forth the man. How beautiful it is, Brother Branham saying, Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Amen. End of quote. And Brother Branham said, No man has ever seen God, no, no, would we ever see him like that? Because he's a supernatural being that full the whole universe. But he came in a body called Jesus Christ and he will reign upon the earth. Amen. So Jesus Christ was what? The Logos that came out of God. That was the Son of God. Amen. And he made man a little God. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. So what is happening? We have to look back all through the ages and see what God is doing. Amen. Adoption 2. Uh, Paragraph 47. It's built right up to this point. And the stone and the capstone never was found. They never did put a cap on top of the pyramid. I don't know whether you know it or not. The big pyramid of Egypt they never, never had a capstone on it, top stone on it. Why? The capstone was rejected. Christ, the headstone, was rejected. But as we grow from the Lutheran age, the Baptist age, the Methodist age, Pentecostal age, we are right up to the cap and age stone now, cap and stone now. See, waiting and longing for that cap and stone to set down. 
your buildings complete. Have you not read in the scripture? The stone that was rejected, of course, realize that was talking to the Solomon temple. But a rejected stone has become the chief of the corner. And I'm saying this only to make a picture to you. Now in the days of the Bible, we are living in the last days. The top of the pyramid, the cross fishes of the cancer age and the zodiac. In the time of the coming of Leo the Lion, in the cap and stone, and in the days of the manifestation of the sons of God. In the Bible, see, where are we? We are right at the end time, end of quote. And uh, uh, paragraph, uh, last part, last part of paragraph 57, adoption 2. So he made women and man, and they never was to be old, never die, never get gray, never. They ate and they drank, they slept, just like we do, but they never knew what sin was. But, and um, hear ye him, um, 12, 7, 60, uh, the second part of paragraph E36. But today, we just think going to church, put on our name on a book, being immersed or sprinkled, or whatever it is, shake hands with the congregation, with the pastor, that settles it. Well, then we come up to Pentecost. We receive the Holy Ghost. It fell upon us, and we begin sh shouting and praising God. And the power of God came down, and we spoke in tongues, heard them interpret it, make great quotations and so forth, and prophecies. That sound fine. But we just stop. That's just the beginning. Just keep moving on. Let's keep moving on and on and on. God is dependent on us. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, God predestined us to be the sons and daughters of God. He saw us in his, in his great infinite mind. Uh, adoption 4, paragraph, um, sorry, 22, 5, 60, evening service. Second part of paragraph 85. God's wanting to place his church. Sons and daughters of God. God, let me live to see it. It is my prayer. So close that I even could just feel it with my hands. Almost look like it's right there. That's what I've longed to see. Waiting for the time when walk down the street. There lays a cripple laying there from his mother's womb. Silver and gold have I none. Oh, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. When God will make himself known. When they'll stop sickness. They'll stop cancer. They'll stop disease. You think cancer is something? The Bible says there's coming a time when men will rot right in their flesh. And the buzzards will eat off of them carcass even before they even die. Cancer is a toothache to what's coming. But remember, that horrible thing was forbidden in that day to touch those who have the, had the seal of God. That's what we are striving for now, to get in and to be positionally placed in the kingdom of God before these horrible plagues strike. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, God give, man, God give man a dominion over the earth. Amen. Let's read. And that's how you're becoming a, a manifestation of a son and daughter of God. To have dominion over the earth. Amen. To whom would we go? 06, 06, 60. And uh, paragraph 60. Oh, isn't this something? Uh, all the sixes are here. And uh, paragraph 60, the second part. Amen. Uh, the whole earth is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God, the nature out yonder, which man has given the domain. When God made man, first, when he made him, he was called Ella, Ella, Elohim, which means the self-existent one. But when he was called Jehovah in the next chapter, note he had made something, give man, which had a dominion over the earth. He was a God of, he was a God of the earth, the man was. And, and second part of paragraph 61, the whole world is waiting for the coming of Lord Jesus, when man shall again take dominion on the earth there, and all trees and everything else will live, and all animal life and everything else waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Amen. Last part of paragraph E62, your purpose here is to worship God, and you cannot worship Him correctly until you worship Him in spirit. And what is that spirit? Seven color rainbow spirit. Amen. If you worship him in spirit and in truth, send John 4. That's when Jesus told the woman, the father seeking such, I will worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Hallelujah. End of quote. And man has become a dominion upon the earth. Amen. And uh, hear ye him. Uh, 6th of August, 1960. Paragraph E, la, second part of paragraph E45 and then paragraph E46. Now notice the Bible said that the world today is groaning. Waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. God's sons to be manifested. The world is waiting for that. For the time to come. That when God's son. 
who sons, who is the ruler of the earth. God put people on the earth, man to control the earth. The Bible said that man is a God. Do you know that? Sure, Jesus said, it's not all written in your law that ye are gods. And if they are gods, the prophet, and who is the word come to? How can you condemn me when I say I'm the son of God? See, they are gods, phone gods. They got the dominion, the world, they're supposed to take care of it. The trees and the animal life. Everything's waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. When they'll be manifested on the earth to come. Lord Jesus, oh come Lord Jesus is my prayer. Oh for the great millennium. When they'll be manifested. They'll be getting ready now for this time to come. The church has got to get ready. End of quote. Oh hallelujah. God uh, also the Messiah. He said God made man to rule over the earth. Amen. That's what God's secret. He wants to bring man bring you in this last and final age he wants to bring you to the manifestation of the sons of god where so what is going to happen to you is it has never happened to anyone in the whole world in the scripture except enoch probably not uh, enoch was changed amen but but there's a little uh, there's maybe a little different between what is going to happen to uh, us and enoch now enoch walked with god the bible says he walked with god and then when he walked with god he was not found god took him Amen. So God changed him right away. God took him out of that, that incorruptible body. Amen. That, that corruptible body. God took him out of that corruptible body, put him in his theophany and took him up with him. That's what did Enoch. Enoch, uh, but Enoch. Amen. But we are talking about in this last days. Hallelujah. You're going to corruption, going to put on incorruption. You're going to be the only one upon the face of the earth that's going to say, Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grief, where is thy victory? Amen. Because you're going to defy death. Death cannot touch you no more. Death, just like Jesus said it, when he rose from the dead, he, uh, he, he spoke that. Amen. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Oh, praise God, the bride, who is the feminine part of him, going to say, The resurrection and the life is in me. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? Debt is swallowed up. Could anybody else have said that? Brother Branham couldn't have said that while he's here. Uh, Irenaeus and Wesley and all of them couldn't say that while they were here. Brother Branham preached on the voice of the archangel, but Brother Branham did not come to the voice of the archangel because Brother Branham is still in the grave waiting waiting for that voice to come to you and I, for you and I to be changed, for you and I to be transferred, to be, uh, you know, changed from one to the next. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. What is going to bring you to that, to the secret? What is God doing? What he has done in all seven ages? He has shown us now. We, he tapped us on our shoulder. The prophet tapped us on our shoulder and said, now look back. All the way to faith, down to faith. You see where I've been bringing my bride? You see where I've been bringing my Gentile bride? And I'm bringing you up now. Now the whole pyramid is bride. But who is going to sit with him on his throne? Is you who are alive and remain, brother, sister. Who is going to change? Know your position. Brother Abraham said, know who God is. Know who the devil is. And know who you are. So that when that happens, what? The rapture will take place. Oh, hallelujah. There's a lot of things, Brother Bram talk about the light in you and things like that, but, but we'll take that on another day. But what is going to happen to you? What are you looking for to bring you to the manifestation of the, of the sons and daughters of God for this day, for this hour? Whatever happened in Moses' days, we're not going to work for our day. Even what happened in Brother Branham Day, we're not going to work for our day. But Brother Branham prophesied of what is to take place in our days. Amen. What is to take place. And he gave us examples. Like there were five manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Five manifestations of a manifested Son of God. Amen. In Brother Branham's life, it was Sister Hattie Wright, two sons being saved. Amen. It was Sister Mida. Oh, hallelujah. She being healed by the spoken word. It was uh, 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 the little fishy. I give you life. Amen. If I remember all all five it was a possum uh, and, and i forget what uh, and then he spoke to the storm those are the five one of the at least more than them um there's also the squirrel um well in animal life the possum and the squirrel may come under the same category animal life hallelujah oh there was what he spoke oh father what it was it was a manifestation of a son of god and i can't go too much into details we almost are, are out of time but when he spoke, he was up in Hurricane Mountain and he spoke to the storm. So that God has shown us a sign. 
but Brother Branham did not come to the uh, to the fullness of the perfection of God. Amen. Or people are not going to they're going to get upset with me and say no 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 no. If he had come to that perfection, he would still be alive today. He would have changed from corruption to incorruption. We too have not come to that yet. We are coming to it too. Amen. Because you are predestined to use seven color rainbow seed word that is in you. That's the real you. And he is pouring out his anointing. He's pouring out his voice. He's pouring out his spirit. Seven spirits are coming upon you all these days. And what is it you're looking for? You're looking for abiding glory. You're looking for dynamics to your mechanics. Amen. You're looking for that spark of the Holy Spirit. You're looking for him to knock on that door. You open the door and say, come in dynamics, come in Holy Spirit, come in love. Amen. What is that dynamics? Amen. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. And let me read some quick crow quotes upon it. I hope I have a little more time. Oh, conference. Amen. Paragraph 71. Great powers of God. That great Jehovah standing there in this theophany, eating flesh, drinking milk, corn, bread and butter. And then said, where's Sarah, your wife? God above you. God with us. The pillar of fire, God with us in the sun. God in us, the Holy Ghost, sure. The offices of God, same God all time. Different offices, sure. Go, it's God, God, the Holy Spirit. He's God and he's here with us tonight. Paragraph, last part of, last part of paragraph uh, E72. Oh, church of God, rise on the wings of eagle. Fly away from this thing. We are going to dig deeper enough to cover on it. What, how are you going to hide from it when there will be a blast a hundred feet in the ground for a hundred miles square? Well, the concussion would break, plumb through the lava, but there's an escape and that I'll, and that I'll raise him up in the last day. But I'm talking about a bomb. Amen. That was, that was supposed to go off. He said, escape, escape. Turn on the light. Um, 25, uh, 164. Uh, paragraph 60, 164. It's the word. It's the word turned on. The light turns on the mechanics and they become dynamics. They are dynamics. When the dynamics, when the dynamics come to the mechanics, it starts the thing a rolling. Amen. And what is this dynamics? End of quote. What is this dynamics? What shall I do with Jesus called the Christ? Um, paragraph 116. The dynamics of this church would be a refilling of the Holy Spirit that we have worked in a small measure. While the headstone is coming down to unite with the body. But when the head and the body unite together, the full power of the Holy Ghost will rise up just exactly like that. Even the dead that's dead in Christ for hundreds of years will rise in the beauty of His holiness and take a flight to the skies. The dynamics is the Holy Ghost. So let's go back. He said what? It will be a refilling of that which you have worked in a small measure. What we have worked in a small measure? Oh, when He anointed your feet. He anointed your virtue. He anointed your, your temperance. He anno uh, your knowledge. He anointed your temperance. He anointed, anointed your uh, patience. He anointed your godliness. He anointed your brother love, brother kindness. And now the dynamics going to come upon that full manifestation of seven live voices in you. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, the world is falling apart. Should report 12, uh, 27, 11, 63. And he said, if you don't cut the work short, nobody will save. And we calculated so on with the Roman calendar and so on that Brother Branham calculated in his days. And I've been showing you the calculation on 2023 and 22. And I mean, Brother Branham believe it there and I do a calculation. Now, I'm not saying I know what day or the hour. I'm just saying this year and next year, something must take place. Dynamics must come on your mechanics. Neighbor, abiding glory must settle. And hear what Brother Branham say. Paragraph 127. And where are we at? We see nations are breaking. Israel is awakening. The signs that his bride foretold for this year. The Bible foretold for this day. We see the mechanical things taking place. Now the spirit, the dynamics of the promised word to get into the church, drive them to Calvary under and to the rapture. There you are. End of quote. So what brother I'm saying, and I preach a message that this dynamic is going to drive you to Calvary and then to the rapture. What is Calvary? The death of a corner wheat. Amen. You must die. This corruption must put on incorruption. Amen. That's the dynamics coming upon you. Amen. Drive you to Calvary and then the dynamics. The absolute. Uh, 01 12 1963. Amen. He is the dynamics to the mechanics. Mechanics isn't what runs the automobile. It's the dynamics that run it. The mechanics don't run the church. The dynamics, the Holy Ghost that gets it. But it's the dynamics of the Holy Ghost and there. To set that a fire to bring it to pass and to make it live 
just exactly what the promised word is for this hour. You see the quote? Sons and daughters, the secret for this hour, for this day. Amen. <clears throat> Not the mechanics, the dynamics. It takes the mechanics and the dynamics, the word of God and the spirit. They are one that gives the word. And, um, you know, uh, Brother Abraham, continue on. Uh, there are other quotes on the dynamics, the rising of the sun and so on. He said a fire. The dynamics are fire that courts up into, uh, into the mechanics. That's the real power of God. Dynamics with the, with mechanics with the dynamics. He said it's the spirit that quickens. It's the spark that fires. It's not a gas. It's the spark that fires the gas. And uh, oh, here we go again with talk. Uh, um, just bear with me one second. Bear with me one second. We are having problems again with our device. And we are about to close. So bear with me one second. Bear with me one second. Hallelujah. Oh, I lost. I lost my camera. Oh my. We lost the camera. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Well, we are about to close anyhow, but we lost the camera. Bear with me one second, brother and sister. Let me see if I could, I could get, let me see if I could get back to the camera. Oh, there it goes. Amen. I'll have to change. I have another camera. We'll have to change it next time. So the dynamics is what? A refilling of the Holy Spirit at which you have worked in a small measure. It's the quickening power. It's the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's God himself coming in you. Seven color rainbow spirits. Israel and the church. Um, Jeffersonville, Indiana. 28-3-1953. Paragraph 79. And I believe that we are in a borderline tonight. I was wondering all about my meetings and things. And how I had to cancel them. I truly believe before the church can have the rapture. It's got to have rapture and faith. We can't even have faith for healing. Healing. We can't even have faith for healing. Thank you. Can't even have faith for healing. Much less for, uh, oh, we can't even have faith for divine healing. Let alone rapture and faith. Got to have a faith that will change and quicken this body. And be taken away. I believe there is a church on its road tonight. A power of the living God that men shall speak the word here, there, and there, and it will flash like lightning. End of quote. So here what Brother Abraham said, it's a manifestation of God. What's going to happen? Sons and daughters of God, seven color rainbow spirit, anointed by dynamics, anointed by the abiding glory that remains. They're going to speak the word. It's going to flash like lightning. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Whoever so ever sins you, you remit, they are remitted. Whosoever sins they retain, they are retained. That's the manifestation of a son and daughter of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It will flash like lightning. Amen. Adoption uh, part 3. Amen. Uh, paragraph 80, uh, 22, 5, 1960 morning service. Paragraph 85. Adoption. Place in position. Where they are? Show me where they are. God calling his children aside by manifestation. They don't have to say one word about it. You will see something happen. Positionally placing his son. Getting him into order. Just exactly with the same things. And he's just is as much authority. His word as good as an archangel. Better. You hear what Brother Branham say? You hear what Brother Branham say? I end of quote. That your word as an adopted son of God is better than Gabriel and Michael and everybody else. Better than an archangel. Amen. Why? Because you are seven color rainbow spirit that came out of your father. That is now in a body that is a turn from corruption to incorruption. And you're waiting for that. Then you're waiting for Michael. Amen. Oh, holly, I'm sorry. You're, you're waiting for Gabriel to blow the trumpet. So then you'll change from mortal to mortality. And here's the last quote. Amen. Uh, uh, adoption 3, Jeffersonville, Indiana. 22, 5, 1960, paragraph 86. Then we can go back to the same Eli, Eli, Elohim. See? Where he's self-existing. Then come back to Jehovah who made something. He gave man dominion over the earth. What are we waiting for? The manifestations. The earth is groaning. Let's get down to it and read it. Alright. Predestinated to the adoption of children by himself according to his good pleasure of his will. To the praise, to the praise of the glory of his grace. What is his grace? Back before when he wasn't a father. His grace, his love made himself a child. 
that he might be predestinated on the adoption of children to the praise of his grace. See, wherein he was made acceptable uh, uh, by the beloved, which is Christ. Make us acceptable how? By him. How we get into him? By one spirit we all baptize into him. Amen. Listen. To whom we have redemption. Uh, and we have redemption to his blood. The forgiveness of sins. Uh, end of quote. What is it brother and sister? What are we looking for? To come to this, to this uh, dynamics. And this manifestation of a son of God. When your word is to be better than an archangel. That was what brother Branham said. God's great secret is you and I brother. Christ in you. The hope of glory. That's his secret. No it's not just me and you. No no no. We are feminine part of the spirit of the logos and he's coming where he's coming to unite with a body oh glory to god and you seen that you're part of him and then when you came out of calvary you were awaiting in the dust of the earth to come so that he will come knock on your door and charity abiding glory gonna come and manifest himself in you you become a manifested son and daughter of god displaying his works may god bless you shall we stand Oh, hallelujah. Oh, let's let just sing the song. It is Jesus. It is Jesus. Oh, it is, it's all Jesus. He is the, the secret of God revealed because that's, you're part of him. So you're part of his secret. Oh, it is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. It is Jesus. In my soul, for I have touched the hem of his garment, and his blood hath made me whole. I apologize, my brothers and sisters, for the video that was going on, but I pray that you stay to the end of the video. And God bless you richly. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you. Father God, we praise you. Father God, we know we are part of you, the feminine part of the Logos, O Lord God. Hallelujah. Now you're shaping us. Now you're molding us. Now you're anointing us by your Holy Spirit, by seven-color rainbow spirit that has been made manifest in our heart and our soul to bring forth that seven-color rainbow life, Lord. Father, which is you, Lord, you want to have fellowship. You want to speak with your people. You want to, Lord God, to, to, to communicate and give us good things. And, and we could bow down and say, uh, before you and say, oh, how we love you. How we praise you, Father God. So be with your people now. Forgive them for their mistakes. Open up their understanding. Open up their eyes that they will see this word that I preach unto them today, Lord. And let them know it is you, Lord. It's all chopped up. I, I, we had so many problems with the videos and so on. But, Lord, I pray that it, it sink into the heart of the people. We ask these things in the name of Jesus. Father, watch over them as they continue for the week. And uh, if you should, Dari, Lord, this week, Wednesday, whatever you want me to do. If you want me to preach, you want me to play a message, you want me whatever you want me to do, Lord. I pray, for the, I pray, Lord, that you give me grace and help me, I pray. And, Lord God, this week, you know, we go into the minister's meeting and... And Lord God, I pray that you guide me, Lord, and my wife, Lord, that we're going to fellowship with Brother Brown up there in St. St. Augustine, Lord. Oh, we're looking for fellowship. We always long for fellowship. So, oh, glory to God, may you pour out your spirit upon that meeting, Lord, and may it never be an anointing like how it was when we get there, Lord God. Oh, grant it. So your, your, your daughter and I, ja Sister Jasmine and myself, will be blessed, Lord. Be with us now. Give, you'll give us traveling mercies and, and watch over us during the week. There's so many things that we're doing. Be with us, Lord God. Help us, we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe. It will joy and comfort give you. Take his name wherever you go, precious name. Oh, how sweet hope of earth and joy of heaven, precious name. Oh, how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of heaven.